Let's look at verse 6 through 10. And it tells us a story about Abraham. Just as Abraham believed God. Now this is right where we left off, right? Still at the same chapter, Galatians 3, verse 6. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are of the sons of Abraham. Are you of faith? Yes. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham before, saying this, in you all the nations, all the nations, all the nations will be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. It's going to tell a story. It's going to give you an example. Paul is bringing out an example of somebody, a man, not an example of Jesus, an example of a man, a person, a human being who lived this lifestyle. Verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things. See, that's what the law does. When you have to do everything, if you do one thing wrong, you're guilty of it all. The law was never designed to bring you salvation, that doing good deeds doesn't make you saved, because there's always one thing you missed. Come on now. There's always one thing you didn't do quite right. You might come to church and do it just right. You came in here, you smiled, you lifted up your hands, you said, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I gave my tithe. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> but I put that in there. Oh, I know I did that right. And I worshiped God, and I was real nice this morning. But then I get in the car, and I have words with my wife. Oh, you're guilty of one, therefore you're guilty of all. You see what I mean? So, in other words, we're doomed. We're, do we're doomed. We, we failed. If you fail in one part of the law, you're guilty of all the law. So, therefore, the law was only designed to show us that we have a need of a Savior. Simple. So, you're guilty in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And then verse 11, but that no one is justified in the law of the sight of God is evident. The just shall live by faith. So we think of the heroes of the Bible and Abraham, everybody likes Abraham. Even false religions look to Abraham and they respect him. Both Jew and Gentile go back to Abraham. We often look at people and look at their lives like you might want to look at my life but don't look too close. I mean we don't look at people's lives I'm going to explain that to you. We look at people's lives and we want to emulate them. We almost sometimes want to deify them. It's like they can't, you cannot be approached. Listen, take my hand, touch, it's flesh. I'm not spirit, I'm a person just like you. But often we want to deify people. So I don't want we to look at Abraham as a man that was so perfect. He wasn't so perfect. But it does tell us that in, Gen in Genesis 11 and Genesis 12 that God spoke to Abraham. Wow. Imagine that, hearing the voice of God audibly. Pastor Edward, wouldn't you like to hear the voice of God just come booming from heaven? God spoke to him, and then in Genesis 15, verse 6, it said it was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed God. But in between Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, the man did some really dumb things. He made a lot of mistakes along the way, but yet God spoke to him, and God saw something in Abraham that was different. So I'm going to ask myself this morning, what is it that God saw? And I want us to see this. What is it God saw in Abraham that was different? God could have used any man. Why Abraham? He was just a man. He, was, he had mistakes. He was human. He wasn't deity. But the Word of God is inspired by God. So therefore we see the good, the bad, all the things that people do. Your life is made up of good, bad, and ugly. Your life is made up of different things, not all pretty. Amen. Think of Abraham. You know, God told him to go. Leave your family, leave your country, and go to a place that I'll show you. So first that tells us that living by faith means that you don't have all the answers. You just go and do what God tells you to do to a land that I will show you. And But what did he do? He took his father and his nephew with him. But God told him to leave his family. But he went and took it. And look what happened. You know the story of Lot it caused him so much trouble. I mean, remember the strife? And remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? That was Lot. 
God told him not to take them. But he took Lot anyways with him, and there was big strife. Remember, he got to Egypt. Well, he was going to the land, but there was a famine where God told him to go. You remember these stories? And when he got there, he realized, oh, there's a famine. Let's go to Egypt. That's where Pharaoh was. And so he approaches Egypt, which God didn't tell him to go there. He gets there, and he says to his wife, Sarah, Sarai then, hey, don't tell them you're married to me because you're kind of pretty. You're pretty. You're good looking. You have... And don't tell the Pharaoh you're my wife because then if he knows you're my wife, he won't flirt with you. You know what I mean? He won't be, if he think, and then I'm dead. He's going to kill me. So let's, so in other words, he gets there and he lies and he deceives and he brings with him Lot and his father and God told him not to. And then he, God said, you'll have a promised child through Sarah. And what did he do? He went into his handmaiden and gave with Hagar and had a child named Ishmael and to this day Ishmael is still fighting with Israel it's still a source of trouble in the world is that the spirit is warring against the flesh constantly and so Abraham made some mistakes but it's often we put that resume and we see all the good but there's the bad too there's the disobedient parts too you still there so we think of failures as well as the things they did right. So he's saying, this man, you can look to as an example. What is the example? When you think you want to emulate somebody or deify somebody, we just think of God. But he's given an example just like you, who's made some good choices in your life, and you've also made some bad ones, right? And even some of the bad choices you've made in your life, you have some of the fruit of those bad choices still in your life. But God always redeems and restores and forgives because there's no end to his love. There's no end to his forgiveness. And God brings all things and turns all things around for his good. This is what we, we say, but yet Ishmael is still running around fighting with Isaac, causing trouble. And Abraham did all these things, even though God is the one who called him and accounted it to him for righteousness. Because he did what? Because he believed God. So, then it says this. In, <clears throat> I don't I want to put it this way. God did not save you so that you could deliver yourself from this point on. That's another way of putting it. God did not save you. That's what he's tell, Paul's telling the Galatians. So that now you could take it and deliver yourself from this point on. God saved you to continually do miracles among you in your life. To, to bring difference in your life so that the purposes of your life come forth. God didn't save you just so that you could take over. God saves you in the same way you got saved is the way what? We're supposed to live. Now... Having begun in the Spirit, it says, are you now made perfect or complete or mature by the works of the law? So we never look at ourselves through the eyes of our mistakes and say, I cannot do all that God wants me to do. I can do what God asked me to do. Think about it like this. Anybody ever taken communion? We all take communion. Right? Uh, take the bread, the cup. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, it says, when you take communion, let a man examine himself. That means you're supposed to look at your life before you take the cup, the bread, and examine yourself. It does not say, let a man examine himself, become depressed, and not partake. It says to the church at Corinth, who was the most carnal church there was. They lived carnal. If, and God saying this, Apostle Paul saying, examine yourself and then partake. It doesn't mean examine and I'm so bad. I was so rotten. I know what, no it says, recognize your failures and the mistakes make it right with God but by all means partake that is the simplicity of our faith 
The simplicity of our faith is examine yourself. Yeah, yeah. Look at what is real. I'm not denying what we see. We don't deny the physical senses. But of what we hear and the problems in our life. But what? Believe. But just do it. But partake. That's the simplicity of faith. Doing what God said to do. He didn't say examine, feel depressed, and quit. He even told the church at Corinth, examine, but what? Partake. Eat. Enjoy. Because it's my goodness. That is the simplicity of faith. Not getting wrapped up in all the failures. I acknowledge my failures and my weaknesses, but I am not destined and doomed to stay in them. So what am I saying to you today a little bit is maybe today you look at yourself in a form of lack, of, of, uh, uh, in a way that you, we, we tend to look at ourselves sometimes that we're needing or wanting something. But God brought Abraham around in his life. And what did he do? Even to the point that he was willing to sacrifice his own son. Now look at Genesis chapter 12. This is where I want to get to. The story, this basic story, what is it that God saw in Abraham. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, isn't it good that God talks to people? Amen. That's, if his life is an example of a life of faith for me, then that means God talks to me. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country and from your family. Remember I mentioned this. And from your father's house to a land that I'll show you, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Like that blessing part, don't you? I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Look at those two verses. How many times do we see the word blessed? Verse 2, I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Two verses, five blessed. Why all the blessings? God is simply saying that he is the author of all blessing. And every good and perfect gift comes down from God, from heaven. So the people of God, you church, everybody in here who are of believing like Abraham are blessed. So the intention is God wants you blessed. And when he looks at you, he sees you blessed. But not just blessed, but exceedingly blessed. And not blessed one time, five times. Over and over. But what is it that God saw in Abraham that was a a little different. Look at this in verse 2. This is a key. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. We all like that. God says, I'm going to bless you. We like that, don't you? Come on. God said, I'm going to bless you. Yes. Then he says, and make your name great. I like that too. Make my name great. Oh, Pastor Allen. Yeah, glory to God. Well, you know what I'm saying. I, people like to have status. People like to be known for something. When you say their name and they know who you are, that kind of feels good, you know. But look at the next part. And you shall be a blessing. Oh, Listen, before God gave him any silver, any gold, before God poured out his wealth upon him, his abundance of life, before God did any of that, God saw in Abraham that not only would God bless him, but he saw that Abraham would be a blessing. Meaning before anything ever comes into your life, before any of these miracles that I have promised you come into your life, I know, Abraham, that you will be a what? Distributor of those blessings. You will not just keep it to yourself. You will have the intention in the heart to give it. I know you'll be quick to give. So if God can get it through you, he'll get it to you. He saw in Abraham that he would immediately find a way to give it. And so often we're only thinking about my needs and what I need and the, the miracles in my life. This is the basic simplicity of faith. Abraham, God saw in Abraham that he would turn around and bless others with what God had given him. Are you with me? 
He saw in his heart that he would do that. That he would be a channel of blessing others when God, because we recognize that everything comes from God. And if God blesses me, the first thing I want to do is bless others because I know it came from God. So he sees this in the heart of Abraham. And what is the, the reason our, we're here or what is the, the real destination of our faith? What is that? Where does God want to lead us in our lives? We think of, I think about these things. Aren't you glad that God does not keep his treasures in heaven? <laughs> that he gives them to us. Don't we know? Aren't you glad that you've been blessed by God in your life? And don't you know that the blessings are not over? And that he's not done yet? But think of it. God wants us to be like him imitators of him and God continues to give and he doesn't qualify his giving think of Abraham in this way Lot wasn't supposed to be with him but Abraham kept giving to him and giving to him and giving to him and it says that their herds and their flocks got so big that they started kind of bumping into each other so Abraham said this Lot so there is no strife between us because he didn't want strife a person who lives by faith does not like strife immediately goes to that person and says I don't want there to be strife between us but look what the wisdom of Abraham a man of faith a man that we're supposed to look to as an example he said see this all this land that we have you take half I'll take the other half but lot you choose which one you want Abraham could have said, listen, I got 40 hectares over here, over on the side. Go ahead and take that and get away. This is all mine anyways. God gave it to me. But he said to Lot, you choose what you want, and I'll take what you don't want, and you take the other. But you choose Lot. But Lot was the one causing him trouble. What do you think Lot did? He took the most beautiful portion of land that there was. One problem with that land, it faced Sodom. And we all know the story of the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot, because of that, so what is it? The, the giving of God does not qualify who we give to. It doesn't say, have you been good? So I'm going to give to you. If you've been bad, I'm not going to give to you. Because if it was up to me, there were some people I'd give to and there's some people I wouldn't. I might give it to Pastor Joey, but I might not give it to Pastor Edwin. I might give it to you, but I'm not going to give it to you because I like you, but I don't like you. But the love of God, what? Doesn't qualify love. Love of God is not qualified by good or bad or by the deeds or the works of the law. So Abraham shows this, that he knows it's not mine anyways. It all belongs to God. God gave it to me. Listen, Lot, the most important thing here is I don't want strife. Take what you want, and I'll take the other and go your way. Amen. No qualif In other words, I don't qualify who I forgive. I'm going to forgive you because you're a very forgiving person. No, I forgive you because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. God didn't forgive me because I was a good boy. God forgave me because I believed in something and spoke it with my mouth and forgiveness and restoration came to me. We don't qualify who I'm generous to. I'm going to be generous to attorney boy, but I'm not going to be generous to Pastor Joey. Because he's nicer to me than you. You're not nice. Go on with him on. Because he's nicer, I'm going to be nicer to him. Come on, people do that. I'm nice to you because you're nice to me. If you're mean to me, I'm going to be mean to you. The love of God isn't that way at all. It doesn't qualify who we're generous to. We're just channels that blessings can go through. What is the destination of our faith? Not just that we have our needs met, but that we have what more than enough and not just more than enough, but that we are now givers of what God gave us. God saw in Abraham what he wants to see in us, that when he blesses you, you will distribute that. To listen to the whole message and to know more about New Life and its ministries, visit www.newlife.ph.